Morning, Lee. Good morning. Sam. How are you, How are sir? You? Not too bad, thank you very much. Good. You okay? But you didn't get a lot of practice done. No, this has been a, a bad. Uh, hopefully, everyone will, or you know, everyone will relate to just going uh, work and life and stuff has just taken things away. So I've I've been playing guitar most days. That's um, good. Uh, still find, but really snatching at it. So really finding that the the, the short the, the exercises are easy to do. Mm -hmm. You know where you can just so you can just sit and do some exercises for five good. minutes. Yeah. But a anything that required a bit more sort of brain power, like right, let's go and read some more theory, or let's do some of the transcriptions from yeah, yeah. Um, that Blues Been, Breaker album. Yeah. Um, which I mean, did you get any listening done? Yeah, I probably listened to the album. Ten times, you know. Okay. So, and and it's funny actually. It's it's it's. Um, uh, I don't actually. I, I. It's probably the first time I've properly listened to that album as opposed to just heard mm -hmm. it in passing. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't really like it the first two or three times that I. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it wouldn't be my go-to music. Although the, as the, it's definitely a grower, and the more I listen to it, the more I sort of appreciate perhaps how groundbreaking it was certainly in the UK mm -hmm. anyway right um, and and I, I think there are some I can definitely follow uh, this concept of, of, of the of the target notes changing over mm -hmm. the three chords in most of the, the blues he does it really well on that record yeah so I, I, I'm I can sort of see I, I, I get it you know mm -hmm. it, it's probably a bit um, it's probably a bit kind of hardcore blues mm -hmm. to be, for you, for, you know. Uh -huh. um, but I was just kind of curious because that's that's one of those records that's got so much amazing vocabulary mm. in it that if you uh, if you absorb enough of it, mm. even just listening to it, you mm. tend to you you'll find that you absorb a bit of the feel, a bit of the yeah. the, the, the uh, this awareness of the notes, which is fantastic that you picked up on that because yeah. that's one of those uh, real key things about it. Um, and if you, you don't have to transcribe from it because mm -hmm. I want you to transcribe the stuff yeah. that you really love. I don't want you to do the stuff because I tell you you should. I was just kind of giving it to you as like a, I'm really hoping that he gets some stuff. Yeah, I'd like to just like jam this, over you know. it a uh -huh. few more times. And I'm kind of thinking that um, uh, it just needs, it just needs to sit, to sit, you know, probably for 30 or 40 minutes aside rather mm -hmm. than five or 10 minutes and just sit and, and but I did, I did enjoy um, yeah, I mean, it's as a, as a as a sort of a body of work. I mean, that uh, for sort of, I'm not sure I've really connected with any like hardcore old school blues player. Mm -hmm. You know, I can even that sort of you know Albert King, Freddie King, all that kind. You know, the the early blues breaker stuff, all the old Robert Johnson stuff. I can see how it's inspired, and I can mm -hmm. see that uh, how the fundamentals are kind of all there. But I don't know that any of it's really. I think probably BB King's probably the mm -hmm. the only one. A lot. That, some that of that really is taste. Liked. Like I I struggle to listen to a lot of Robert Johnson. Like mm -hmm. I appreciate it and yeah. I I respect it and everything yeah. else. But I don't listen to it socially. Like yeah. you know when I'm chilling out or whatever. I don't tend yeah. to listen to it. I li tend to listen to it for work. Yeah. Rather than for pleasure. Yeah. So. Uh, finding the ones that really connect with you is the really important yeah. bit. If the Beano album doesn't have a have a think about. Like what guitar-y records mm. with lots of solos on it mm. really make you get excited? What do you really love doing? Yeah. And what I'd like you to try and do, because it's it, it's probably going to be a month between yeah. the next session of Christmas and all that coming up. See if you can, between now and the next lesson, mm. find 10 licks from a record that you really love. Yeah. And they can be as short or as long as you like, I don't mind. Yeah. So just a little phrase or a little lick. Uh, what I'd do and what I'd recommend you do is I listen to say like a Larry Carlton record or whatever and I'll put it on and I really f I do focused listening mm -hmm. with a pen in my hand mm -hmm. and I just write down times mm -hmm. where there's stuff that gets that's like because even if I love the whole solo there's probably the amount of effort required for me to transcribe the whole solo and learn it all and then learn all the phrases yeah. is a lot yeah. whereas it's a lot easier for me to go that lick that mm -hmm. I love that lick I yeah. want to steal that lick yeah. So to have a go at doing that, and then just try and do it because it's yeah. a lot less pressure on you to work out one thirty second, well, thirty second, three second phrase yeah. rather than a two minute solo. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I, so I, that's, I might persevere with that Blues Breakers album just because, mm -hmm. as you say, it's um, 
it, it's it's uh, the fundamentals are there, mm -hmm. you know, and and uh, but it's, I don't, it's a bit like a dictionary that album. It's got it's so kind of, much amazing yeah. stuff going yeah. on that you can nick. Yeah. I, and I, I, I everybody was, nicked since. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I was surprised one. I hadn't. Uh, yeah, when, I know in the last one you'd gone, you know that album did it, and I'm like, yeah, I definitely know it like that. And then when I started listening to it, I was sort of thinking, I don't even know if I ever really have yeah, right. properly listened to this album mm -hmm. before. So I, I hadn't until Pete Wittard, when, when I was playing with him, he said, oh, this stuff I did it off the Beano record. And I was just like, didn't know what the Beano record yeah. was. And it was like, I had to ask around and yeah. think, because well, it's not you, even called the I'm Beano record. I was going to say, record, the first yeah. thing you do in iTunes is search for Beano, and it's just like, and there's nothing there. Yeah, so, yeah. There's, anyway. Yeah, it's just because... Uh, Clapton Trini, a yeah. copy of the Beano co comic on the front. So that's the, the that's your transcribing homework. Yes. Is um, and I'll just put it down here. So ten, ten licks, but really don't don't heap the pressure on as being like don't try don't allow it to become like this big thing that's going to be really difficult and painful to do. Because I want you to enjoy it. I want you to get to the point where you're just when you're casually listening to stuff, you go. Little yeah. phrases can catch your ear and go, that was great, yeah. and then see if you can clock what the song was. Or yeah. it, It's really helpful to find where in the song it was, just to say, do you listening through again or whatever. But even if you go, oh, it was in Stevie Ray Vaughan's Couldn't Stand the Weather, that, that, there was a yeah. lick in that I loved. At least yeah. then you only got to listen to the song one more time through to find that yeah. phrase again. Yeah. So that's transcribing. Now, I know you work really well with scale patterns and these kind of mm -hmm. training exercises. So... Uh, and being that we're mostly doing kind of bluesy based stuff, I want to, between now and ne next lesson, I want you to become really hip with all five patterns mm -hmm. of the minor pentatonic scale. Mm -hmm. And there's a very specific way that I want you to practice them, which you're going to find really helpful if you haven't done it before. And that is playing the scales, always starting and ending on the lowest root note. Mm -hmm. You go up the scale as high as you can in that area of the neck, as low as you can and then back up to the root note. So on, on this scale, this would be pretty easy, right? We'd start here, we'd go all of the way up, all the way down, finish on the root note. Yeah. But on pattern two, that's the lowest root note. Okay. So I want you to start on that note, play all of the way up as far as you can, then all the way down, and then back up to the root note. Right. Now the reason this is so important, it's a massive mistake a lot of people make is learning pattern two like this. They start here. So when they want to play in pattern two, they have to go, well, there's pattern one, there's that note, and then they have to build from that to do yeah. it. And that's yeah. just, it's, a, it's an extra step that is absolutely unnecessary. Yeah. You want to see them all to do with the root note. Yeah. Do you know pattern two already? Can you do, can, uh, you, can you do that one already? I probably would have would have to go from where it says. Uh, uh, yeah. That's right. Because I, I do this all in shape. Right. Again. Hang uh, on. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, is that? Yes. Is that right? Almost. Uh, no, that's there. So that's it. Now same of shape. Of course, because I've got to follow the. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Okay, so all of the patterns are on the website. I'll send you a link yeah, to that. Yeah? So what I want you to do is I want you to do it one pattern at a time. Pattern one you know, yes. right? So you're going to start with pattern two, and you just literally start on there and play it up really slowly. So that's it. Good. Slower. You're going to make a mistake. That's it. Keep going. Yes. Good. And then back up again. Yeah, back up to the root note. Oh, stop on the root note. Okay. So that's it. So from there, up as far as you can go, down as far as you go, and back up to the root note. Stop. That's it. Now, the big advantage with this is it means that you can play in other patterns straight away without having to do all of this friggin' right. If you wanted to use pattern two in E, mm -hmm. you don't have to go like... Oh, there's that note, so there for us. That, you can just go, there's the note E, because you're getting so much better now at yeah. knowing where your root notes are. Yeah. It gives you the ability to find your root note and then find the scale straight yeah. away. It's, a, it's yeah. quite a big deal. Pattern three will start here with the third finger. That's it. That's it. Good. Do, 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 do. Back up. Do, do, do. That's it, and finish there. Okay. Yeah, pattern four. Pattern, pattern four does start. Oh, sorry, we're doing this in A, aren't we? We're doing sorry. it in A, that's it. Do, 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 do. 
and that's it. Excellent. And pattern five, lastly, will be here or here. You could probably do it there, it'd be easiest. Uh, oh, it's that's just this it. one below. Yep, yeah, exactly. I don't even know what pattern. Okay. Then second fret, fifth fret, second fifth, three five, three five. That's it, and it's coming back to the root note that's the real key thing. Yeah. yeah? So ne by next time, I'd like you to be able to play any of the patterns mm -hmm. in any key. So mm -hmm. I could say to you, play me pattern three mm -hmm. in D, and you go, well, there's a D, pattern three was this one, and be able to play pattern. Okay. That's, uh, yeah, that's your I, challenge I, because I it's. I need to print that off and. and uh... Uh, just uh, if you remind me, I've got a sheet mm -hmm. for it okay. that you can download. Mm -hmm. and it's, um, uh, it's on the site as well for you guys. I'll put a link in the Lee's lesson page. So the reason that I want you to work on that so much is because we really need to start defining where you are in the neck and use this as mm -hmm. like a framework because mm -hmm. you do know them already. But I want you to really know the the function of each of the notes yep. because that way we can start doing the same stuff that we were doing where we were going in A. Yep. We want to be able to do it here. Um, is there any uh, element of the, the, the five different patterns that make them different from each other or are, is it just the same notes in five different places? It's the same notes in five different places. What you'll find is that each different pattern has licks that work better in each pattern. So it used to be, and this is another, one of those funny misconceptions that took me years to get out of, was I always thought, and I, I think it came from the jazz thing, where you should learn every lick in every part of the neck. Mm -hmm. So I sat down and tried to do that and realized pretty quickly that if you're going to do that lick, if I try and move all of those notes over to the next string, so mm -hmm. I'm starting on a D and I'm going to bend a tone, it's like, it just doesn't work. It mm -hmm. doesn't, it, it's not right, you know. Yeah. And it's not something that the great blues players did. Mm -hmm. they, they didn't use the same licks in every pattern. Why would you use such an awkward fingering to try and play yeah. that phrase when it's easier there? You just move yeah. your hand. Yeah. So um, that's, again, one of those things that as you get more and more familiar with the patterns and you understand the function of the notes, you can then choose mm -hmm. which licks will go where. They only live in one place. Occasionally you might find you could use the same lick in a couple of different ways, but it's not. Yeah. that's not the default. The default is that you have a lick and it lives within a particular framework. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So, I'm also going to introduce another uh, pattern for you mm -hmm. to do with that, because I know you got on really well with doing the thirds and stuff of the yeah. major scale. I want to give you a pentatonic one. Okay. Now, this one, it's kind of, I, I tend to call it fourths, but it's a mixture of fourths and thirds if we look at the, the, na in, the names of intervals, which I don't think you've got to yet in your theory course. The easiest way to think of it is that it's the notes next to each other in the pentatonic scale. So we can do right. I just want you to work on pattern one. So I don't mm -hmm. want you to try and do it for all of the other patterns yet because there's a few kinks that you have to try okay. and line out as you go. So pattern one, we're literally, we just play the first note of the scale and then the note n underneath it. Oh, just that's in physically. Is it physically, physically underneath it. Then we play the second note of the scale, but then we play the note underneath it but the, that's in the scale still. Do you, do you understand what I mean? That's it now. So first finger, good. Third finger, good. First finger, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's it. You so, you're good. You good. So that's it. And then exactly the same thing backwards. Listen. So. Are you when you're I'm about to tell you watched. I'm about to tell you. <laughs> okay. So at the moment you're letting the notes ring together. Yeah. And I want the notes separate. Right. So you want to So you what want I want you to, to do talk. is I want you to learn the rolling technique, mm -hmm. which is it, it's not a jump. So when you try to do one at a time, you're moving the whole finger over. I want you to aim for using the tip of your finger on the first note, and then you roll it down flat, but can you see that I've moved it down just enough that it's still yeah. in contact? It's yeah. got to remain in contact with that string to right. mute it. So you do want it muted. Exactly. So we do from that to there. Good. Now, right, okay. little finger, third finger. 
You don't have to worry about that one. Now this one again. Tip to roll. That's it. Tip to roll. Good. Good. That's it. That's okay. it. All right. Yeah. Now the reason this is oh, a it's harder with the little finger to roll. It's a, it's a lot <laughs> harder with the little finger, but it, 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 it's just part of the game. Yeah. You will find that you tend to use the little finger less in the real world, but okay. it's worth practicing it still, just mm -hmm. as you know, overall technique development. Now. One of the key reasons that this is such a great exercise is because it's teaching you to find sounds and get used to playing sounds that would otherwise you would have avoided doing because it was technically difficult. Okay. So it's unlikely for you to go mm -hmm. at the moment. Even mm -hmm. if you kind of heard that in your musical yeah. mind, you wouldn't have done that because doing this is physically you wouldn't have done it before. It would have been awkward. You would you would have gone and that's yeah. not the same. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So uh, it's also part of the, a lot of the more modern blues, Eric Clapton and kind of later, use a lot of this idea of playing notes that are on the same. These kind of little phrases. They're really, really nice. Very, very cool. They make it sound a little bit more hip and a little bit more modern than old school mm -hmm. blues, but in a very classy, still way. It's not like getting into, uh, you know, to Eric johnson -y or whatever. It's not techno yeah. um, pentatonics, yeah. but it's a really good development exercise. So um, I've just written a little note of it there. I'm going to do a full tab for you. I'll okay. print it up and, and email it to you, and I'll put it up on the website for you guys as well. So that, I just want you to think in pattern one. Mm -hmm. Eventually, we are going to do it in, in all five patterns, yeah. but to, just as your little month work. There's, there's, there's a, yeah? uh, one of the, I mean, I think it's like a more of a slash thing, but it sounds similar where it, I'm, I'm sure he's going uh, like a... Yeah, that's right. So you'll start, it's all in pattern one, I think, but it's got a sort of a it's similar kind of... It's a switch of mine. It's a... Uh, yeah, but he, uh, I think he uses that. Or you hear He uses this, this technique yeah. all the time. Yeah. All of the really good rock guy, like rock blues guys mm. use it a lot. Mm. It's a, one of those little fundamental tricks. Once you start going here, you have to roll each time. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's one of those, if you're going to do any of those kind of pattern stuff, mm -hmm. you have to have that, the facility to play the notes that are on the same fret. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. And it, it, again, it's one of those ones that a lot of people avoid because it's just tricky. It's kind of hard under the fingers and most people avoid what's difficult. And it's actually, it's not that difficult once you've done the practice of it, yeah. right? So yeah. that's, that's your other, that's your scale stuff. Yep. Music theory, did it get a look in at all? No. Most time? No, nothing at all? Uh, oh, okay. I mean, again, I, I, uh, let me just think, let me just think. Again, I think I was finding it difficult because I was snatching at it and just trying mm. to sort of do, but we were into um, Sharps and thirds and fourths and, fourth and things like that, I think. It's whatever's in module four, basically. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, I've started adding some of the why this is important, <laughs> but I haven't had a chance to go through and do it properly, but it's, it's still, yeah. that, that will happen. Um, okay, I, I want to do two, two more things with you today. One is uh, a trick on the three note per string thing, and then I want to spend a little bit of time talking about Little Wing, because we mm -hmm. haven't looked at that for a little bit. Mm -hmm. So um, the first thing, three note per string scales, how are you getting on with that doing the, the hammer-ons and flick-off stuff? Uh, didn't really do a lot of it, but um, yeah, so have, di didn't really do a lot of that, I'm afraid. Okay. But, so that the hammer-ons are, oh, aren't too bad, and then it's no. the, the flick-off flick sort of thing. Sort of, yeah. It's, it's not going too bad. No, it's it's just not great, needs, though, it just it? needs some practice. Yes, yeah? it does. Now I don't mind that. It's, I said it's, it's the, just playing the scales, and it, and I I don't know if you showed me this or whether I just did it anyway. But playing the three note per string, doing the thirds thing. Mm -hmm. Maybe you did show me that yep, last lesson, but you know. Yep. So, so there's that. I did a bit more. I did a bit more of that kind of practice. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, not so much the hammer on thing. Okay. What are the the next thing that I want you to have a work on with that? the hammer on to flick off. So you need to do a little bit more of it just playing it straight yeah. up and down first. Now, because there are three notes on every string, everybody hears those as being triplet straight away. So that the beat is here like triplet, triplet, triplet. That's how we feel it. Now the 
danger of doing that is that it limits the way that we can use that scale to mm -hmm. only playing in the, that rhythmic grouping all the time. And people tend to use those scales in that way mm -hmm. rather strictly, which is a shame because they're useful in lots of other ways too. So I would like you to start feeling them in groups of four as well. Now what I mean by that is once you, you need to be a little bit more confident with this first. So at least one or two more weeks of without doing this. I just want to show it to you now so that and you could reference this video online yeah. to, to get it. I want you to do the same pick, hammer, hammer, pick, hammer, hammer, mm -hmm. but I want you to think of it as in terms of four notes per click if there's a metronome going, or you could just use your foot. So like this. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a. You're doing all those hammers and pull offs. Four E and a. I can't even tell. No, no, but that's the leap. That's it. That's the thing there, because what you don't want is for it to be stuck in this. So it's just that all, if you ever use that trick, it becomes that thing where you're going to do diddly 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 diddly. Are you picking on the four or just accenting on the four? Uh, neither, I was, just, I was just tapping my foot on the four. I'm trying, what I'm aiming for is for all of the notes to be as even as I can. No, it's weird. I just wasn't sure whether you were. No, so it, maybe it doesn't matter. Yeah. So I'm just thinking in terms of. Da, 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 I've done any practice yet today, so my fingers are still feeling a bit uh, not quite on. But I'm aiming for all of the notes to be even. I don't mm -hmm. care. I'm, I'm not necessarily trying to accent one. That's a different exercise that we'll play with yeah. another time. It's just about trying to feel to break you out straight away of, of or, or stop you falling into yeah. the trap of yeah. just thinking that these three note string scales are always just about triplets. Okay. Because it's that's what most people fall into what I fell into when I was learning it as well and it took ages to kind of break out of it yeah yeah so uh last thing to discuss was Little Wing yes when was the last time you played Little Wing uh recently -ish? are you, are you yeah, giving I mean, it a bit when, of a go the, now and then? yeah I mean the first probably three lessons where it, each lesson I started mm -hmm. thinking you're going to ask me to do it is to practice yeah. furiously and, <laughs> and now I'm like, like I'm in for an hour and probably bothered yeah. but uh I mean I don't know I should I should be I should be able to. Okay. Great. I should be able to do that better, but um... tunes for when you play yes, in a yes. music shop, right? Yes, I know. <laughs> you hear I know. it all the time. Everyone practices furiously before they yes. come to editors to, yeah. <laughs> to try their new guitar so they've got their party piece down. Um, now, what I wanted to discuss with it, so it's going good. I like the fact that you, you've, you've changed a few things, yeah, yeah. so you're kind of making it your own thing, and that's really good. That's what I'd like you to do. That's mm -hmm. the best thing that you could do. Now, if we're talking about soloing over that tune, so let's say mm -hmm. that you, you uh, somebody calls it as a, at a jam session, you're yeah. like, yeah, I know Little Wing, okay, yeah. oh, Lee wants to play yeah. Little Wing, let's go. And it's turn to take a sol time to yeah. take a solo. You said already, oh, you can just blow E minor pentatonic scale over the whole thing. Mm, apart from... Uh, I, I, apart well, from... 
Well, I'm pretty sure the, the bit where it does the, the B down to the uh, A, I don't, I'm never sure that that's the right place to play right. uh, the E minor bit over it. Okay, what key are we in? For the whole thing. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> at, at any point, are there two major chords a tone apart? Um, the or two minor chords a tone apart? The G to the A is a, is two major chords apart. No, it's, it's A minor. Is it A minor? Okay. Yeah. What's uh, the, What's the other chord? Uh, that the the B flat is just a passing chord. So, so you, right. So we got we got. Let's go. So we got E minor. E minor. Okay, now what if there were two minor chords a tone apart, they had to be what degrees of the scale? Uh, the fourth and the fifth. <clears throat> no, is that the two major chords then? Yeah. Okay, so it must be the second and the third then. Okay, so if that's the third one right. and that's the second one, then the first one is? G. G. Okay. The chords in the key of G, G major, mm -hmm. A minor, that's in the in the song a lot, B minor, that's in the song a lot, C, that's mm -hmm. in the song a lot, D, that's in the, at the end of the song, mm -hmm. E minor, that's, we use that quite a lot. F sharp minor seven flat five, which we didn't use, but no one ever does it anyway. And G. So we're pretty much in the key of G, right? Right. Is which there? I should know because that's the relative major thing of E minor. Right. Anyway, exactly. So, yes. But there's one chord that's not. Where's there a chord that's not in the key? Uh, what the pass? That weird passing. Yeah, we've got chord, the weird passing chord. So no, we can we can ignore that one. Um, there's one where it stakes a little bit longer on on a on a different chord. Uh, um, yeah, there's yeah. an F. Okay, yeah. so we've got... Now, on that F chord, yeah. the G major scale has the F sharp note in it. Right, so that's now, really horrid. the F sharp note sounds wicked over loads of the tune, particularly like in the B minor. Look, there's the F sharp note is in the B minor yeah. chord. So F sharp as a note is a perler, Really good, interesting choice beyond yeah. the pentatonic scale for the whole thing, except when you hit that F chord. When, right. the, when you've got the F chord, yeah. you need to... The minor pentatonic scale, some people just continue to blast through with it, and it's kind of... Yeah. You can kind of get away with a little bit, but if you wanted to target some notes, yeah. the F notes would be a really good... If you're jamming in E, just know there's the little F yeah. triad, so you can be yeah. here... Then back into minor pentatonic. Yeah, it's only and for a split second. It's it? only for that split mm -hmm. second. But being able to make that change is one of those little points where every yeah. listener in the room, when you break out of the minor pentatonic, if you've been minor pentatonic it up yeah. all the time, yeah. and then suddenly you go to something that's different off the chords, we're like, oh, yeah. he does know where the chords are. <laughs> like he is playing off the chords, and it doesn't mean. Of course, people don't think that, right? Your average yeah. Joe doesn't think that, but that's what happens in their mind. They they recognise that you've made the changes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's thing one. The thing two, if you get a chance to do, I know you like jamming with the looper mm -hmm. pedal, mm -hmm. so a really cool thing to do with this particular tune is to yeah. record yourself playing all of that rhythm yeah. part mm -hmm. and, and imagine that you're the rhythm guitar player sure. for somebody doing the song. So leave out all of the, the yeah. frilly bits. Yeah. Yeah? Now, you can use the minor pentatonic, but what's even cooler is if you just think a little bit about what the chords are at the time and see if you can target some of the notes in the chords. Okay. Right? So on the E minor, the first chord... Minor pentatonic, yeah, you're great. Now on the G chord, if you're here, if you imagine that's a G chord up at the 12th fret, yeah, yeah, yeah. these okay. are the notes that you might want to target. They're in the minor pentatonic anyway, yeah, yeah. but you get that difference of going... Now A minor, look at that. So there's still there's that. The, it's a, all of this is in the minor pentatonic yeah. except for this one. Yeah. So if you were to target that note again, mm -hmm. I'll just play those first few chords. So E minor. G. A minor. Yeah. Just hitting yeah, that yeah. one note, nice. it's just mm -hmm. like, oh, it's mm -hmm. it, it, suddenly you're making the changes. Yeah. It comes to the B minor. There's a little B minor chord. 
Yeah, yeah. That's that's a solid, it's, yeah. it's that one. So if you just targeted those just for that, when it goes to him, you went... And then back to you. Mm. You know, you don't have to hang out on it all the time. You could go... Move from B minor to A minor. You could do it here. Yeah. If you're on the E minor here. B minor. Back to minor pentatonic. Yeah. So if you think like your minor pentatonic is a safety net, you can always go back, except on the F, <laughs> you can always go back to the minor pentatonic. Yeah. But if you can just try and learn to be aware of what the chord changes are in the background and where yeah. you are in the song, yeah. like keep a kind of a mental uh, running of, of where yeah. you are, what the chords are, and then just think about visually how to play yeah. those chords. On the A minor, you can think like this. It, it is bit of a mind blown thing. It, it, understand, I can see now kind of knowing what the notes are, seeing the notes within the chord and in chord, because it, it, as you say, fundamentally, if you know the minor pentatonic, you know, you've got the shape. Yeah. But it's just knowing that, how, you know. Where which, you can divert out yeah. of it. It's such a nice. But I'm not it, thinking it's... about chords and stuff. I'm, I'm, I've always had to do that historically by just hearing where a note yeah, sounds yeah. right now. You... So there's a bit of trial and error, but. No. Okay. And trial and error is sometimes mm. really cool because you can get a thing called a happy accident, right? Mm. Because in my experience doing solos and sessions or whatever, a lot of the best stuff that I've ever done mm. has been an accident where I've mm. done something that's a little bit weird or I've thought about the wrong thing or I've thought it was going to this chord and I've targeted the wrong chord, mm. but somehow it just sounded funky or my ears have gone, why don't you just try this? And it might be yeah. the wrong thing. So don't be afraid of doing that. I don't want you to put you off using your kind of your natural instinct for stuff. But yeah. if you can add the thinky part, what yeah. you'll find is that your ear will develop a relationship with your hand that you can find that yeah. instinctive part <coughs> more effectively and it'll work better yeah you know no, I, I mean it's even just amazing watching you do just that on the it's like it's 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 that really frustrating thing it's it's simple mm -hmm. but oh i'm not it's not there yet no it, 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 you know you will be next mm. year this is your mm. The thing that I'd like you to achieve next year, mm. if you continue coming yeah. every couple of weeks yeah. or whatever, if you're still enjoying it, is to be able to target notes within a blues. Yeah. So I'd like you to be able to, mean you to sit down and play a blues, yeah. and then you be able to know where you are within the blues to be able to target some of the notes when you choose to, or choose not to. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, you know, it should be your choice. Um, one thing we haven't done a lot of at this stage is the rhythm stuff. And one thing that I propose that we work on a bit more next year is jamming together and yeah. going, right, okay, you're going to play the rhythm for me for a bit because yeah. I want you to be able to expand into, you know, I know we talked a bit about like all of these other chords you can use. Yeah. I want you to be able to do some of that as well yeah. so we can sit down and have a really good jam, have yeah, a fun jam and go, oh, I'm going to try doing this or, oh, well, oh we're going to, you know, how to go off piste a bit and yeah. all of that. Does no, that sound true. like a plan? It does sound like right. a plan. Right, so just to recap, you've got scales. I want you to revise the five patterns. Yes. Make sure that you know I'm from the lowest root note. That's a yep. really, that's the yep. keyest, most importantest thing of all. Okay, practice starting okay. and finishing on the lowest root note. Yeah. You've got your the, the pattern in fourths, just to get used to the rolling technique. If yeah. you forget, there's a lesson on the, it's literally, I call it rolling, yeah, on the, on the website. If you just uh, yeah. search for rolling, you'll find that. Music theory, see if you can crack the end of grade four. Yeah. You okay. should be able to do that by the end of the month. And if you get to that point, the next step where we start looking at the function of all of the notes in the minor pentatonic and how yeah. to, to muck around with it, that'll become a lot clearer. Transcribing, you've got the 10 yeah. licks. So just fight, li Anything. try and keep yeah. your ear out for licks that you like, yeah. not ones that you know already. So, so <laughs> phrases that you that grab your ear yeah. and go, that's a phrase that yeah. I think would sound great in my playing yeah? yeah and then we'll do a bit of analysis on it next time you've got the three note per string scale continuing with the hammer-ons and flick-offs and then know. working on do, do it straight for the first couple right, of weeks right. as you will in yeah. triplets mm -hmm. and then try and do it with four notes per click just tapping your foot is enough to, to be thinking one e and a, two e mm -hmm. and a, three e that's be plenty and then little wing jamming and just trying to develop a little bit of awareness of where you are in the song and then mm -hmm. being able to target some chords. Just think of it visually. 
Don't worry yeah, about the, nice. the note stuff now, but just think, if you're on the A minor, you want to target the A minor. Yeah. Here's E minor pentatonic, pattern three, which you will have been practicing anyway. So you're going. You're still on the G. Now it's hit the A minor chord. Back to minor pentatonic. The only yeah. difference really is that one note. We just added that one in from the A minor chord. Uh, I never play in pattern three. Okay. Either, so I need to. It's cool. Pattern three is my favorite. It's yeah, really well, good. I, I, I like it to... more than pattern one, which is. I don't. Yeah. I, and again, I, I know because what. I know one ever, when I was learning this, no one ever said, that's pattern one and that's pattern two uh -huh. and three and four. It was just like, here's a thing that you can do and you just. Uh, yeah. And then later in life. But you there's go, oh, nothing that's... wrong with that. Yeah. It's really, the, I don't mean to feel like, oh, I got off on the wrong foot yeah. or that was the wrong no, way to do it. It's like, um, I hope he doesn't mind me telling this story, but uh, Jim Cregan, who uh, played in Cockney Rebel, Rod right, Stewart's yeah, guitar player yeah. for a long time, he played the beginning of uh, Come and See Me Make Me Smile. The... Yeah. Uh, whatever. And the first part of that is the G major scale, straight up. That's just G major. And I was, uh, we were talking, we, I did some writing with him for a, a while, and uh, he, we, we, I brought up that song because he was saying oh, he doesn't know all of these major scales and stuff. I'm like, yeah, you do. Like, yeah. He's like, no, I don't. I said, look, you played it at the start, of the, the very start of the yeah. most famous song that you played on yeah. was the major scale. And he knew, he knows the sound of it. He could play yeah. the major scale all over the fretboard, but he had no idea of what the <laughs> patterns were, what they were called or any of that stuff. I mean, he's not a stupid guy, he's a very yeah. learned, very intelligent yeah. musician, but he just does it by sound. He goes, here's the sound that I want to make, and mm. this is what, and mm. that guy's played on tons of hit records, loads more than me, yeah. so you can't say that it's a bad approach to be just yeah. playing things by instinct or not learning the patterns, right? Yeah. What I think that the patterns give you is kind of like a shortcut. With guys like Jim, he's been playing guitar you know, 24-7, absolutely absorbed into guitar, and if you've got the time and energy yeah. to do that, great. You can ignore all of the, the other stuff. <laughs> but for those of us that are human, that have got other stuff going on that where we want a shortcut, that's yeah. where the pattern stuff becomes really helpful. Well, I think the other thing I want to try and do as well is I'm not convinced that the... Um, I'm not convinced that the sort of little half-an-hour windows are as conducive for some stuff they are, mm -hmm. but I think for other stuff I need to just I need to just find a longer window, a longer chunk, a longer chunk, um, and whether that's just me personally or whether lots of people will experience mm -hmm. that, but just it takes the, if the you brain can, needs to get into that sort of learning. If you zone, can do you know. it, it's a good. Um, my own practice it tends to be in either little bits of chunks. Mm. I, I practice stuff like while I'm editing this video, mm. I'll edit the video while stuff's rendering or whatever. I'm yeah. waiting for Pro Tools to output. I'll grab a guitar and just do little bits of stuff. Yeah. But when I do serious practice, I need to have a couple of hours, and, mm. it, and I can only do that when Mrs. is at work, kids at nursery, yeah. uh, doggies yeah. up in the kitchen at the moment. Actually, she's probably desperate for a wee. I need or either that or there'll be a surprise for me on the kitchen floor. Um, uh, but when everyone's away and mm. I can really focus, and so maybe it could be that you you try and find like say on a Thursday afternoon, yeah. I'm taking every week. I'm going to take between two and three off. Block it out in yeah. my diary. I, I, yeah. I'm going to have that I hour think it needs to be to do that kind of thing. You know, I, I do think that's the. And what I'm doing is I'm I'm picking the bits that you're asking me to mm -hmm. do that fit within relatively yeah, yeah. short windows mm -hmm. and if I've tried to do the theory stuff but shoehorn it into that short mm -hmm. window it, it's just it's just being snatched at and it's not um, do you, for stuff like theory so for me an equivalent theory would be stuff like I'm trying to learn about cameras and all of this stuff at yeah. the moment so for me that's my late night stuff while the missus are watching telly or whatever, the kid's gone to bed, I've got that little window where I used to be watching Narcos or whatever. Now, that's probably still on, but instead I've got the laptop open or whatever, or the iPad, and I, I'm just starting to try and observe that. So, uh, you know, that might yeah. be the kind of place where you can do it. I don't know, you know, everyone's no, you might different. Be right. I think, uh, maybe I don't I want put, your missus writing me a hate mail. What iPad. are you doing? He's not paying no, any no, attention. No, He's doing his uh, theory. Uh, I, should, I should put an iPad on my Christmas wish list because it's like the phone's a bit diddy. Yeah, yeah. It's sort of uh -huh. uh, no, it's good, man. I, 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 and I think actually that the, the fact that we're probably going to have a slightly extended break between now and mm -hmm. the next lesson will just give me a bit of time to just sort of go, come on. Yeah, yeah. Get this shit together and um, Dude, you, you've improve. done really well. The improvement I've seen since I met you in 
the begin- earlier this year or whatever for those fir- yeah. first rut busters is noticeable. Right. And you see it in the comments. I see it in yeah. how you play, how you're approaching it. You know, yeah. you, 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 think, you were already doing really well. I'm, but, I'm thinking yeah. more. I'm thinking more. I, I, I still go back to this kind of like, you know, for all you kids out there watching this like that, you will never be in the position to learn to your your brain and your body oh, and your yeah. lifestyle and, your, and the time you've got and stuff from that age of thirteen or fourteen yeah. years old to probably twenty. No mortgages and, and just commitments. Golden, are... cram it in, yeah. cram it in. That's probably one of the luckiest <laughs> things for me was that I got really into it. Like yeah. at that age, I played a bit of football on cricket or whatever, but it was I I spent I remember my, I used to live opposite a park a playground yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. And I remember hours sitting in my room, practicing guitar, seeing the other kids in the playground yeah. and, and wondering if I was missing out and then going, no, I enjoy this more. It was yeah, just yeah. what I was really into doing. And, wow. and uh, I think it is it is that golden opportunity to, to yeah. and the mind's really plastic and you learn stuff faster, yeah. you know. Yeah. Anyway. We're not kidding. We're not trying to be the old men, but if you're 13 years old watching this video, just... Yeah. Power on. Power on and do it do as it. much as you can. You know? Anyway, well, this is our Christmas episode as well, isn't yes. it? So happy yeah. Christmas. Happy everyone. Christmas, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> happy Christmas to yeah, you too, man. Too, man. It's a pleasure. Okay. Well. See, you, See you in the new year. Bye.